And so one more thing uh, I wanted to mention too um, about the fretboard. Uh, so when you look down the fretboard, let me point this at the camera. Okay. And I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but you guitar players all know this. So the fretboard has is not flat. It has a radius to it. It's got a curve like this way. It has a curve this way. And it's a specific curve. It's a specific radius on different guitars. And they have a different feel. Some of them work better for somebody that tends to use their thumb over the top a lot and likes the feel of really, you know, controlling uh, the fretboard. Others work better for somebody that keeps their thumb on the back. And then, you know, they use their mainly their fingers all over, you know, and they don't come around the top too much. Um, so generally, the fretboard is one, one radius. Uh, it might be common radiuses are 7 and a half, 9, 12, 16, 20, and 22. Those are the most common. 20, 16, 20, and 22 you see on an acoustic guitar mostly, and a 7 and a half, 9, 12, and 16 you see on electric guitars. So uh, this guitar has a compound radius. Uh, what that means is, is it's one radius up here, and it's a different radius down here. And then it's a perfectly smooth transition from one radius to the other. And so what that does is gives you a comfortable feel for playing open chords and that kind of thing. And then as you come up, it flattens out a bit, which if you're the type of person that likes to bend a lot and stuff like that, your notes are not going to uh, bottom out on higher frets which tends to happen if you have a like a nine inch radius all the way up a lot of times what happens is if you're bending here the strings gonna bottom out up here on the frets and you're gonna lose the note and the, the way that you combat that traditionally is you just raise the action of the guitar raise the height of the strings off the neck uh, which is really the the least uh, desirable way to do it when you have a compound radius, that's not going to happen because the uh, the fretboard kind of flattens out as it goes up the neck. And I can show you kind of it, it, that might be hard to picture for some. So the way the way it works is if you make a cone, or if you picture a cone, like this it's a cone, right? It's a smaller radius up here. And it's a larger radius here. So when you make a compound radius fretboard, essentially what it is is you're taking a take a section of that cone where you have a smaller radius up here, and then it smooths out to the bigger radius up here. And then of course on a fretboard, you know, you don't just wrap it up like this, you use a very specific radius on the small side and the large side. Uh, and then you cut it and sand it and shape it. There's all different kinds of ways to do it so that uh, you get that smooth transition from one radius to another. Uh, and it makes a guitar really comfortable to play. Uh, notes don't bottom out. And it enables you to have a, a shorter action, which helps with intonation and all kinds. Of, it's just, it just helps in every way that you can probably think of uh, with the guitar. So that's a thing. That's a feature that you find on custom guitars that you don't... Uh, you don't normally find on a on a manufactured guitar, um, unless it's a very very expensive manufactured guitar. You know, maybe some some of the builders are just starting to do it, but they do it on their really like high end custom shop. You know, six thousand dollar guitars, kind of thing. Um, this guy is not that much. Um, this guy's twenty five hundred bucks. So. Uh, and you get you get that feature uh, and all the the other stuff uh, that we talked about in this video and like I said before you, there's stuff you can just ask for uh, if you have something in mind you know and a good luthier will tell you if uh, they can do it or not or if it's a good idea or not or why or you know so uh, one more selling point for custom guitars so and you know what I just noticed tonight or it just kind of struck me tonight, but I've been noticing this uh, in car commercials and motorcycle commercials, and I've seen a couple other commercials 
that uh, like tonight I saw a Dodge commercial that features a luthier when they're talking about their trucks and it's because they're they're trying to create a culture of going back to appreciating handcrafting items and and seeing the value in that and uh, I think it's awesome that they uh, are using luthiers in their commercials because it's a great example of uh, something that has a long history of being handcrafted and the best ones are handcrafted you know um, everybody doesn't need a two thousand dollar guitar uh, I think everybody does but um, you know so an entry-level guitar is okay for the first couple of months somebody's playing until you know once they make that they get the, to that hump where they make the decision yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this forever or eh, yeah, I don't know you know what I mean but also then there's the aspect of the you know most entry-level guitars they don't keep their value you know what I mean you, if you go in a guitar center and you buy a $200 electric guitar as soon as you walk out the door it's only worth 99 bucks you know and that doesn't happen with uh, with custom guitars with handmade guitars um, because the end product is so much better and because of the time put in it it's you know it holds its value you know and that and I'm talking about the luthier built guitar you know not there's there's hobbyists out there that build them and stuff and good for them um, nothing nothing against those guys uh, I think it's awesome it's an awesome hobby just like some people build cars as a hobby too you know uh, that's an awesome hobby, but you don't want to buy one and run it on a NASCAR track. You know, just like if you're gonna buy, if you're gonna, if you're gonna run one, if you're gonna run a guitar six nights a week while you're gigging, big advantage to have a custom built guitar where the woods are grained correctly, the materials are scrutinized heavily. Someone took the time, you know. To, to make sure that it's right and that it's a good instrument because it bears their name you know that most most luthier built guitars bear the name of the luthier somewhere and so you know we make sure they're right as right as possible you know and it's a never-ending journey to you know being a luthier kind of like being a musician you know it's a constant learning process no matter what stage you're at or whatever you, you know if you seek out knowledge there's always knowledge to find and, and learn stuff you don't know so um, buy one trust me you'll love it peace out